Platonic and Pythagorean background to Aristotle's inquiry. We should begin, as Aristotle does in the Metaphysics, by looking at the source of a particular philosophical problem and previous attempts at solutions. To restate the problem that motivates much of Aristotle's work in this field, for which he offers his theory of substance as a solution, it is the question of how physical things can undergo change and yet in some sense remain the same. Plato's theory of forms is perhaps the most obvious place to start, even though Plato is evidently not a pre-Socratic. We have seen that Plato, like Socrates, does not regard the changing world of appearance as real or as a basis for genuine knowledge. The very fact that the world we experience in sensation is constantly changing makes it of negligible value for Plato and for Socrates too, who does not attribute the value to the sensible order by contrast with the eternal soul and to the extent that he may have accepted a prototypical version of Plato's theory of forms to the unchanging eternal forms. Aristotle characterizes the platonic forms as numbers. He does so partly because the forms are supposed to be abstract like mathematical entities and partly because the principle of individuation for changing things in the world of appearance for Plato seems to involve their exact locations in space and time which can be completely characterized geometrically. It's good as saying that when we speak about one, we're not actually referring to the numerical one, but to that which the numerical one represents. In the same way that if we draw a circle or a triangle on the board and start analyzing the diameter of a particular circle or triangle, we're not actually studying that particular circle or triangle on the board, but that to which that circle or triangle that those which we have drawn on the board represents. Beyond these, Plato, like Pythagoras, regards mathematical entities and numbers as possessing philosophical and almost mystical significance as representing the forces of nature in definite rational proportions and harmonies. The idea of substance or usia in ancient Greek is thus closely related in the Pythagorean and Platonic schools to numbers or the properties of numbers as Aristotle recognizes. Let's read this, ab uh, this section abstracted from uh, Aristotle's Metaphysics number 987a. For a general definition was impossible of any of the sensible things which were constantly changing. He then called such entities forms. And he, Plato, said that all sensible things were spoken of in accordance with them. For the homonyms existed by participation in the forms. And participation he took over with a mere change of name. For the Pythagoreans had said that entities existed by imitation of the numbers, whereas Plato said that it was by participation changing the name. However, 
they left it to common inquiry to determine what might be the imitation or participation of the forms. Again, in addition to sensible objects and forms, they said that mathematical objects existed between them, differing from the sensibles in that they were eternal and unchanging, and from the forms in that they were many similar ones, but only one form of any kind. And since the forms are causes for other things, he thought that their elements were the elements of all entities. For he thought that the large and the small were elements as matter, and that the one was so as substance. For the forms came from, the, from these by participation in the one, and the one was substance, and the one should not be considered another thing. And he held a similar position to the Pythagoreans, also as to the view that the numbers are the causes of substance for other things. And also in regard to making the dyad replace the single unlimited and unlimited and the unlimited come from large and small, this is special to him. And he also supposed numbers in addition to those that are perceived, whereas they said that numbers are things themselves and they did not posit mathematicals between them. The changes that physical things undergo in the world of becoming for Plato are understood in terms of the forms they are trying more or less perfectly to imitate or in which they are trying to participate. Although Plato does not mention this particular example, it is clear that he would describe the changes and guava seed undergoes in becoming a guava tree as steps along the way towards perfecting its nature, a guava seed being just another kind of imperfect manifestation of a certain type of tree and hence of the form of tree. To the extent that Plato is interested in the specific processes involved in the changing world of appearance, he would insist that when a guava seed changes into a tree, the guava seed and the tree all along participate in the same form. And the successive stages of change that the guava seed goes through in becoming a guava tree are developmental phases in its realizing the form to which it belongs in the best and most complete way it can under prevailing circumstances in the world of becoming. A changing object's participation in a particular form explains its identity through change while the geometrical forms provide a more specific, formal identity for a changing physical entity to be specified in terms of the continuity by which it occupies specific spatial locations at particular times. This is presumably why Aristotle refers to number and the mathematical properties of things in Plato's formalistic conception of the identity conditions for changing things. Aristotle, whose vast you see now in front of you, does not accept Plato's theory of forms, but questions whether numbers are adequate to understand what it means for an object to change while in other ways remaining the same. He objects to platonic forms and numbers on the grounds that abstract entities by themselves do not adequately identify and individuate particular entities. In the first place, Aristotle does not accept the existence of abstract platonic forms and mathematical entities. Even if he did, 
Aristotle believes that platonic forms, including numbers, by virtue of their universality, could never adequately identify or individuate particular sensible things undergoing change by passing from one set of properties to another. Thus, Aristotle rejects Plato's theory of abstract forms as a way of explaining identity through change and decides that he must continue his search for a satisfactory answer to the problem. The trouble with forms and numbers is that at least as Plato and Pythagoras interpret them, they are not part of the world of becoming with which Aristotle is primarily concerned but belong to an abstract order. They are supposed to populate the unchanging world of beings as opposed to the world of becoming where change occurs. We know from many of Aristotle's writings that he rejects the concept of platonic forms and argues at length against Plato's theory. In the Nicomachean Ethics, Book 1, Chapter 5 or 6, for example, Aristotle targets Plato's form of the good as an abstract concept which he attacks. Aristotle rejects Plato's universal form of the good and presents an alternative concept of earthly human goods for human beings as social animals living real lives in the non-ideal world as we find it, with all its problems and even imperfections. Aristotle does not accept Plato's distinction between the world of being and the world of becoming of real and changing abstract forms versus changing appearances. As a result, Aristotle is not willing to countenance the application of forms or numbers as any part of the solution to the problem of explaining the metaphysics of change and the persistence of dynamic entities such as guava seeds and guava trees through change, so that in answering this question, he does not at all recourse to forms, neither to forms, nor to mathematics. Thank you very much for listening. If you like this content, please subscribe and share the YouTube channel Samutsari Sasimula. Thank you very much.